Hello and welcome to another Devotion for Troubled Times. It is Tuesday, the 14th of March, the day before tax day, but we get a break from that this year. They've extended our tax deadline until June or something like that. Anyway, we are once again in the COVID-19 pandemic. We're wrestling through and I'm just trying to remind you of some things things from scripture that may encourage and help you. I've used various devotionals in the past and things of that nature. Today, I just wanted to share with you words that the Apostle Paul shared with his beloved son in the faith, Timothy. Timothy became a very important support to the Apostle Paul, traveled with him, and um, oftentimes was left to pastor a congregation that had just been started. And in nearing the end of Paul's life, as he was in prison, he sent a couple of letters to Timothy, his beloved son, in the faith. He calls him my beloved child and, um, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. And I'm going to be reading from 3 through 7. Um, to you today. So this is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. It says, I thank God whom I serve. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy, whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith. I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. Oh, in these days, how many of us long to be with one another so that we can be filled with joy. We truly are missing that close human interaction with each other, the ability to meet together, to see the smiling faces of those we love, and to embrace them in hugs and give them a handshake of greeting and all those things. All things that we used to take for granted that we have not been able to do because of physical distancing, and we miss those things. This is how Paul is. He's in prison. He's isolated. He's removed from Timothy. Timothy is out in the field preaching and proclaiming, and they didn't have phones, and they didn't have Skype, and they didn't have uh, Google Duo, and they didn't have the uh, Zoom meetings. And so he's really missing his beloved son in the faith. And he says, I'm, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, the faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but I just want to let you know that Paul, the apostle, is concerned that Timothy continue to be bold in his faith. In difficult times, in trying times, especially perhaps when your mentor has been thrown in prison for proclaiming Christ, it might be possible for us to grow slack, to grow worried, to go fearful, to, to become uh, less zealous in our belief, in our faith, and in our presentation of Jesus Christ crucified, risen, and coming. And the Apostle Paul doesn't want Timothy to grow cold in his faith. He doesn't want him to grow slack in his faith. He wants him to fan that that faith into a flame and into an action. And, you know, that's my heart's desire for you as well. I pray for you all on a regular basis, and I pray that God's Spirit would be present in you in power, that He would enable you to do even more in this time than you imagined, that you would not grow slack or faint, but that you would fan into flame the gifts that God has given you. Paul is the one who had laid his hands upon Timothy, and it was through his ministry and his teaching that Timothy had come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ. As he laid his hands on him and anointed him, it was 
the gift of the Holy Spirit that flowed through him into his beloved son. And he's reaching out to him and reminding him of that and saying, Timothy, stay firm. Fan into flame the gift that you've received. Don't let it grow cold. And then he says, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control or a sound mind. And I just want to talk about each of those things for a minute. First of all, God did not give us a spirit of fear. God, in his presence, it says that perfect love casts out fear. And the fear that maybe there's the fear of judgment or the fear of death, their fear of being a failure, fear of being inadequate. All of those are the kinds of fears that we may live with. We may be fearing these things today and this time. But when God comes into our life, then fear should be driven out of our lives. One of the things about um, our life and about nature as a whole is that nature abhors a vacuum. In other words, it doesn't like empty space. It fills it. And so whenever you create a vacuum, it has a tendency to um, get filled. Any slight crack or chink, it's really hard to keep a vacuum because the atmosphere tries to rush into that. I don't know. I, I worked with a vacuum tank once upon a time, and it was really interesting. As you would release the vacuum on that, you could just hear the, the wind whistling through the, the tubes into that container to fill it up again. And that's true. So in our hearts, if, if we're going to get rid of fear, if the spirit of fear is going to go, we have to fill it with something. And what we're filling it with is love, agape love. The love of God that comes in and just fills us and overwhelms us and assures us that we're okay, that we are right in his presence, that we do not need to fear anything because God, our maker, our provider, our protector, our fortress, he is there and he will hold us. He will carry us through. And then it goes on and it says, not only do we get filled up with a spirit of love, but we also get a uh, spirit of power. We get the spirit of power. And the word there, dunamis, is, is a word that oftentimes means the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit's power, dunamis, dynamite, you know, a lot in a little package. This great power comes into our lives. The power to walk in confidence. The power to walk in the knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life that drives out that fear. And so... We have a spirit of power that resides within us. And then it says um, a spirit of self-control or of a sound mind. The word that lies behind that is um, the Greek word sophronomos. Uh, probably ma massacred that. But anyway, the, the beginning of that is the, the word for wisdom. And so we have the sophos, the wisdom of God, but it's applied wisdom. And so it's prudence. And so in these days, while we don't have fear, a sound mind or sober thinking would mean that, yeah, we do exercise prudence. We do recognize that viruses are too small to see. We recognize that you can't, um, you can't take them lightly, that they will infect Christians and non-Christians alike. And so you operate in ways that will keep you safe and secure. You use the wisdom that has been granted to us to operate in ways that are prudent, that are wise, but not fearful. And brothers and sisters, this is the key. We should so focus on the love of God and what he's done for us through the cross of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of our Lord so focused on the hope that we have and on the love that we received that we're able to continue to engage without fear. Fear should be driven from our lives. Now, I'm not saying you'll never be fearful again. You know, if there's a loud bang behind you, you may, you may jump. Now, that's normal. The fight or flight instinct is strong within us all. It's God-given. But the deep, nagging, 
soul gnawing fear that comes from Satan should be driven away by the love of God. And we should be able to rest in his presence. So today, I pray that you will. I pray that you will fan into flame the, the grace, the gifts that you have received through the indwelling, abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come into your life. He saved you. He's cleansed you. He's washed you. He has a plan for you and a purpose for you. And if you will focus on the love of God, he'll carry you through. So keep the faith. Be hopeful. Allow love to overwhelm you. Walk with confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit that flows within you. But exercise sound mind, self-control, wisdom, be prudent, and go out and engage the world in a way that will glorify God. God bless you. Have a great day.